lot like salt to us. If we um, put a little bit of salt on our chips, they taste really nice. If we put a lot of salt on our chips, it'll kill us, basically. <laughs> it'll do the same thing. A lot of fertiliser will burn the root system of the plants. The reason if you've been putting a handful of fertiliser in each pot, you've been able to get away with that for so long, is when you water, you're overwatering things, and so the fertiliser is just getting dragged straight through the pot and out the bottom and onto the ground. So it's just a waste of fertiliser. But now we've got everything on sources, we're only filling the saucer up, we're also saving on our fertiliser. The more expensive the potting mix is, usually the better it is. Don't try a cheap potting mix just to save a couple of dollars on the bag of potting mix. Because compared to your plant and fertiliser, it's not worth it. A cheap potting mix breaks down quickly. As it's breaking down, it's actually using your fertiliser to break down. And when it breaks down, all the air that helps trap the water in it and makes little areas for the roots to grow disappears in your potting mix. Who's had plants in a pot and they potted it and 12 months later the mix has dropped dramatically in the pot? It's the potting mix breaking down and as it breaks down it's all sinking, it's closing all those air gaps in the, in the potting mix and you're losing those spots for the roots to grow. So use, and, and as it's doing that it's using up all your fertiliser as well. So when you're watering, um, the old days of getting a mist bottle and misting your maiden hairs is a real furphy. Um, that went out about 50 years ago. That, it, a couple of really bad things that does. Is one is it doesn't actually water the root system where the plants get the water from. The maiden hairs get the water from their roots, not from their foliage. So the water is not getting down the roots. It also creates a nice, really damp spot in here, and your plant's dying because the roots aren't getting enough, so you get dead foliage down in the crown. And then you add water to it, which makes it a really nice place for your fungus to grow. So you end up with a nice little crown of fungus, and then more plant, more material dies, you end up with more fungus, and more plant dies, and you end up with more fungus. <laughs> and then all the insects and bugs and things say, oh, this is a nice place to live too. I'll go in there. So you can get rid of that by good watering techniques to start with. And if your plants do do that, just pick the bits off, or with a fern, with a maiden, just cut it off. Uh, if there is bad fungus and that in there, and, or a lot of insects and that sort of thing, go over it with a blowtorch. Yeah. Same thing, burning. Some people just make a little fire with some bits of paper. Um, Blow torches just quicker and easier. Though be warned, plastic likes to melt. <laughs> if you get scale, the easiest way is to pick off the leaf with the scale on. Or if you can get onto it early, just pick the bits of scale on. And, and you'll be able to keep it under control for months. Just, just doing that. Bottom up watering is fine. Um, bottom up watering is great, but I'll go back to the fertiliser. Now, if you if you put the right amount of fertiliser in, it's fine. That plant uses so much fertiliser. If you put a handful in, that's easy. And you put that on the top as you water. The fertiliser goes down through and out the bottom. So, so that's fine. You get away with doing that, and you put a lot more fertiliser on because that's happening. If you've got that sitting in a saucer or a bottom-up sort of watering system and you just fill the saucer up so the water's going that way, not that way, so that you put the water in the saucer and the water goes up, the fertiliser and the potting mix in this pot has to be exact. Because if it's too much, the salts down here build up, build up, because fertilisers are full of salts build up until it goes into the root system and that's what will kill your ferns, especially your main hairs, they don't like having too much salt. What's the idea of the pot? What does the pot do for a plant? Holds a mix. It holds a plant upright. That's all it does. That's all it is. Think of your pot plant as a hydroponic system. If, if the pot, if the plant Roots don't have to go searching for food or water. 
you can grow a really big plant in a small pot. So if you want to keep it in this decorative pot, you want to keep it in this decorative pot, you want to stop the roots from going searching for food and water. Who goes to a nursery and buys the smallest plant they can in the biggest pot? Oh. Okay, who buys the biggest plant they can in the smallest pot? Right, someone was honest. Yeah. That plant, or well, the big plants in the pots, and the reason you do that, because you know the best value for money, because we sell plants on pot sizes, not on plant sizes. That plant probably ran out of fertilizer two or three months ago. Now that plant still probably has enough fertilizer for two or three months. So when you take that home, from the moment you take it home, the root system's looking for food and water. Now you can keep that growing in that size pot. You just have to feed the roots food and water. So we've gone through the water, we know how to feed, we know how to get the water to the plant when they need it. Fertilising is the same as food. Who would prefer to eat three meals a day or one really big meal once a week? <laughs> it's an easy question. So, so should I fertilise once a year or once a month? Most fertilizer, most fertilizer rates like Thrive, for instance, liquid fertilizer, it'll have a rate written on it. We all know we're going to read the instructions from now on. Um, I think, I think from memory, it's a teaspoonful to a nine liter watering container once a month. Indoor plants is less than the outdoor plants. Um, anyway. I'm getting a two teaspoonful, it could be two, but we'll read it before we use it. Uh, say, say it says a teaspoonful once a month through the growing season. A better idea is half a teaspoon a fortnight, or even a quarter a teaspoon weekly. So if you're watering your plants through a watering container, you're watering your pot plants with a watering container, put your fertiliser near where you fill your watering container up, and put a weekly dose in because we're only watering once a week now because we've got things in sources. So each time we fill the watering container up, we put a weekly amount of fertilizer in and do it every week. The root system doesn't have to go searching for food and we can get a really nice big plant in a small container. Have a good day everyone.